Now listen, I want to welcome you to the after party. <laughs> episode 25 where we can just be girls and talk about whatever that is we will be women hold on be women about whatever that is we want to talk about listen you just said a little bit pregnant wait did you just really say that's like being a little bit pregnant i don't know what that is (laughs) what is that where you do that at this is taste this is scope just a drop, just a dab. No! Stop! Commit! You can't do that? <laughs> You're like, no! I'm praying for your people. Is that what it is? I'm praying for myself. I'm praying for all of us. You know, and we have to be at least honest with ourselves. You know. Honest with ourselves. Wow, that right there is a loaded statement. We have to at least be honest with ourselves. What is something that you feel as though, give me your top three things that you feel as though us as a people aren't being honest with ourselves about? Take your time. One, we're lazy at times. We're lazy at times. You was real quick with that. I I said, take your time. You said one. We're lazy at times. Like, we have all this power and this intelligence and this resilience. And this, we have all this love, all this good stuff, all this resourcefulness, the creativity, right? We have that. Stop being lazy with it. Stop taking it for granted. Stop. Stop. Two. (laughs) Okay, okay. we're going to stay with lazy. We're going to stay with lazy. Stay with lazy. Okay, so stop being lazy with it. Stop taking it for granted. Stop. Stop. That's how you said that. So what would you say are three things that someone can do manage better in their lives to to conquer their lazy way be open to opportunities be open be open to something that's different it different doesn't mean bad right it's just different be open be open to to us. Be open that we're not all the same. Hmm. Be open to us. Be open to we're not all the same. Okay, nope. so open. What is something else? What is the second thing that you would say? Um, travel. Hmm. Travel. And not just to the Caribbean islands and getting drunk on the booze cruise. That's fun. Wait a, wait a ma'am. You being real rude. You came for people's necks. I, like I heard, I felt the slice <laughs> for others. I felt the slice. I felt the slice for others, ma'am. That is fun and beautiful, and I'm not knocking that. But the world is so much bigger than that, you know. Because when I tell you, when you go somewhere and you see how amazing our world is, you see our God everywhere, right? It's so much bigger than that. And then you also appreciate what you do have, you know, especially as a female. Again, I love traveling. I'm, you know, I'm going to do about, I'm going to have that kind of life and all that. But as a female, Thank you, God, for having me born in this country. We're going to go back to that. Okay. Go back to your gratitude for being born in this country. What is the third thing you would say to conquer laziness? (sighs) Journal. You know, or whatever you just write it down or record it. Whatever works for you. 
But actually, get to know yourself. You know, know yourself before you out here trying to know others and present yourself. So that's why, you know, journaling, recording, know yourself. And that's what you're saying is coming from the journaling. You're actually writing. What are you saying that people write? Because people could write. People could sit there and play an album. Exactly. Or however, or record. Like I said, you could record yourself. You know, I think sometimes social media gets a bad rap. People are like, people are doing too much. I think social media saves a lot of lives. It's a tool. It's a, it's an outlet. You know? So I don't knock it. It's a tool. So know yourself, learn yourself. That self-awareness is powerful, right? And we don't we don't have to get it when we're 50. <laughs> I mean, getting it is getting it, right? But if we can... <laughs> it doesn't have to take five decades. You know what? <laughs> All right. So I wanted to go back to what you just said. You said, thank you, God. As a Black female, I want to thank you, God for being born in this country. And you said that along with the statement that people should get out of the country and see things and do things. Why that Why that prayer? Not even just the country, just start baby steps. Even in our country, right? Get out of your hood. And let me tell you, the hood is not bad. Whatever your hood is, Go outside it, please. You know, go outside it. Um, but my world became so much bigger. And I thought my world was already big because when we go down south, my mother kept us busy. She kept us busy. She kept us busy. You know, so she kept us busy. <laughs> We had church, you know, we had our family. She would take us places, you know, she wanted our world to be bigger and I'm thankful. And even with our world being bigger though, I remember one time I was asking her, you know how you had those after school specials and the kids would have curfews? I said, mommy, can I get a curfew? She's like, you're not one of those little... And I've always had friends of every race. I went to school and was ready to work. You think you're little white friends? If you're not with me, you know, with your grandparents, you're not at church, you don't need no curfew. Go on and go sit down somewhere. So, <laughs> okay. Folks just go somewhere and come back home at a certain time. What's wrong with you? <laughs> that don't even sound right. <laughs> and the thing is, you have to realize where they're coming from. What they saw yes. as children. I can say that there are things that I did or do or have done as an adult that I made my mind up as a kid. Yes. That yes. that when I get big, I'm doing it this way. Yes. And it wasn't until I sat down and like you said, got that awareness about myself and really started dissecting and looking at the things that I did that I realized, wait, I made this up when I was six, when this happened. <laughs> and I made this vow with myself and I kept the vow and forgot all about it, but I, 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 I consciously forgot yes. about it. Subconsciously, I kept that word. You do, you do. Word and and put up with some tomfoolery to keep a promise of a six year old. Steadfast, right? Steadfast in the silliness. Yeah, <laughs> we, we do that to ourselves. We do. What do you? What is something that you feel like you have done that? There's a promise that you made as a kid that, as an adult, had you paid attention, you would have been like, "Yeah, no, nah, that's not right." Um, there was. Some, I remember one thing about my family too. I, we could be the best drug addict, crackhead, alcoholic, but we're going to always work. We're going to, listen, 
We are, we, we, are, we are gonna work. Our work ethic is bar none in my family. So, again, when you ask about the issues, yeah. we were functioning crackheads and alcoholics. We still going to work. <laughs> I don't know the quality of the work that we <laughs> I just want to get done. No, 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 no. I know some functioning people that are amazing. Yeah. And people did not know they were functioning. They just thought they were methodical in their thinking and speech. Yes. And I knew I was like, mm, no, that's not. I'm not going to fully attribute all of that, all the characteristics to that. Yes. I'm not fully c contributed to the the abuse of the whatever the substance. Mm -hmm. I know I could see it peeking out. Yes. And doing its best to cope. Get that. Yeah. And I yeah, so you know that work ethic was always within me it's just who I was you know um and I remember I got my first job at 15 and I lied to get that job because I had asked my mother by then she's clean and sober so now that's why I'm laughing like wait wait a minute so I didn't lie so they it's kind of around that time that's when they said they were hiring 15 years but they really weren't and I was so excited and my mother was like you can get a job and she didn't really want me to have a job because she had to pick me up so I was frustrated so I was telling my grandfather her father grandmother I can't get a job he was like why I was like because I'm not 16 he was like well tell me you're 16 and I was like I should he was like there's two things you lie about in life your money and the get money Wait a minute. Wait. There's only two things you lie about is your money and to get money. Who said this? My grandfather, my mother's father. I'm going to need your grand... Okay, so listen. This book... <laughs> Y'all and me say it. And, and that, that... Listen, like I said, and so he died in 2015 and at home, but... Like I said, I've been blessed. I've always had this wisdom being poured into me, and I'm so thankful. So we had a fire when I was like seven. So I told the people our house caught on fire, and that is where my work permit is. I kind of alluded to it. So McDonald's hired me, and I was such a good worker. <laughs> they kept asking for the work permit, and I would hold them all. But finally, when I turned 16, I came in and gave it to the manager. He just looked at me and he laughed. He was like, it's a good thing you're such a good employee. But Granddaddy said, and my mother was, man, how did you get this job? Granddaddy said, Daddy! So, so yeah, I, I wish that I wouldn't place so much value on work, though. Um, because that's all I would do to not face other things in life. I realize that now. I've always been, I've always had multiple jobs. Even in the military, I would have part-time jobs. Wait, huh? Even when I was active duty, I would have other jobs. It was just a way to keep busy. Yeah. I think for me, if I'm not busy, I start ruminating. I start sinking. I think a lot of times, especially now, I think a lot of us have pre we're predisposed to certain things. So if you know that, right, I don't have to just pop a pill. I can do things. I can work out. I can be with my friends and my family that I enjoy. Um, there's things that you can do if you already know yourself. If you know the signs. So yeah. That would be the one thing I think. <laughs> and that's that's the thing. You just said. Uh, you referred back to the last thing you said. With the journaling and the awareness. You said to be by myself. And to, you know, to recognize that things were going on. And to, to start doing other things. 
recognizing when I, and I think that's that awareness. Yes. I was talking about in that component, that last component of um, your advice in reference to um, not being lazy. And yes. With the laziness within yourself and that awareness, awareness for you has done what? What, what, what is something that you weren't aware of and how it was affecting you? And then when you became aware, how it, how you turned that around? I think one thing that I became aware of that I don't think at one time, so, you know, I don't have children. Mm-hmm. And I remember, so one, my mother, again, my family's old, they're from South Carolina, they're from the country. So everybody's a wife, you know. Now, so what that his woman came by the house and somebody had to choke her out? But everybody's a wife, right? So I knew that I did not want that. And I remember like hearing him like, well, I'm the wife. And I'm like, I don't see where that's a win. Like, as a little girl, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm really trying to wrap my head around this, this woman called your house or y'all had to go beat up this woman because I never understood that. And y'all were, I'm the wife. You know, it gives you eavesdropping. <laughs> so I remember my mother asked me, you know, but one, again, even with that, there is this, uh, if you have this baby, you better change your last name. That was just, you know, that was just the mantra. You would not just be around here having babies. Cause girls were having babies young. I, we were so fearful of our mother. I think we were the only girls on the street, for one. We really were. Because we don't want any smoke with her. But I think, too, my mother had asked me later on. I was like 24. And she was like, are you going to ever have kids? And I was like, no, you said I have to be married. And I was not looking for a husband. And then she also was like, well, you can get married. You know, I got married to your dad. It just didn't work. And I was like, yeah, but I, again, I saw her and my auntie how they were real mothers. Us kids were always priority they did without they did without all the time and i told her i saw how you did without she's like but we did it didn't look like it was having much fun i'm a pass so <laughs> I, I, and i always saw it to this day <laughs> those bad kids they cost money <laughs> He didn't look like he was having much fun. (laughs) (laughs) You're a mother, and I can tell that your kids were always a priority. And and I, you have so many. I think for me, seeing all these real women, all these real mothers around me, that bar, that was a bar I did not want to try and get to. I mean. I think I overthought it probably too. And then when I decided that maybe I should, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need a nanny. I'm too old. I, I, I like to sleep. Just. <laughs> you know, we don't do that. <laughs> listen, my uncle was, listen, I know, but I was gonna, maybe they let me start up my plan. I was gonna find one that spoke Spanish, so that's okay because I'm going to try to be bilingual. I had a whole little notebook of how I was going to do this. Yeah, it sounded like you would like you <laughs> ready to start a list. I did. But anyway, so yes. <laughs> Ma'am. Five. Five. Yes. Is there anything else you would have wanted to say during the episode concerning mental health? I would say, again, just stop. So, you know, we have those words now that we're learning, you know, toxic and triggered. And they sound good. But again, they kind of don't, you know, he's a narc. He's a narc. We hear that so much, right? 
I have trust issues. We're quite eat. We're quite good at saying that. Proud. Okay, now what? What you mean now what? What you gonna do about it? Oh, I just have them. Oh. <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> you are rude. I love it. You, I love it. And even if it's, it's funny because I had these discussions like, you know, my brother, my brother, we would go out and then some guy would like try to talk to me and I would make, he like, don't make it a teachable moment, just tell him you're not interested. But I have to have a conversation. Brother, why did you feel that that was the way that you should approach me? Let's talk. So my brother be like, it ain't got to be a teachable moment. Leave those fools alone. And I'm like... But we can do better. I know we can. And I want him to find love. It's not going to be with me. But I want him to find it. Because I love black love. <laughs> but that's a love you're going to have to see with somebody else. No, no. And it would be like, I see your underwear. I remember this one like, it's polo. Yeah, but I see your underwear. Now, we're grown. It's bad enough our youngest do it. You know what you... Oh, it's polo. And now, okay, if you want to go there, it's like this bar stool. So you got your underwear all this bar stool. There's a lot going on here. So, <laughs> I want us to take pride in just who we are. We are so powerful. We are so, I mean, we just are beautiful, right? Like, we are physically beautiful. We have this way about us that cannot be bottled. It cannot be replicated. You can call it what you want. We are royalty, right? And I don't take away from anybody else. I have women that I consider my sisters that are, you know, white. They're they're Polish, Italian. I don't take that away. I'm also not going to minimize the privilege it is to be black. It's a privilege. It is a privilege. It is a privilege, and we need to start walking like we know that it's a privilege. Yeah. We should. It, it always amazes me, especially because I've lived in Germany, where women will get black and will get mad about other women with that man. I'd be like, what's wrong with y'all? Look at that man. If I was that, y'all would be mad at me too. <laughs> Why are you mad at them seeing them for what they are? Why are you mad about that? You know, I'm happy that he has somebody that loves him, that receives him for who he is. Not for nothing, the ones that y'all get mad about, they cry balls anyway. But, but he's happy. <laughs> I can't. People do tend to, I can't say that I, I have seen people be taken aback when a black man walks by with a woman from another race but then I just look at the other person that I'm with like you know him you know him like like that was somebody you was in a relationship with you you would have wanted to invest you have no idea what she has yes and love is in this world for people to find love companionship I'm, I, I, I want my black men to have that. I don't. I, I, I want them. They deserve that. They need that support, and that's what makes them feel comfortable. Whatever reason, I'm not going to dwell into it, you know. But that's not my problem. That's that's so not my problem. And again, I'm good. Like I'm good. <laughs> right. Right. Because I only want who wants me. I'm not going to stand in front of you and hop up and down and say, see me, see me. What, what is that about? No. Why am I going to be in places where I know that I'm tolerated and not celebrated? Again. Why am I going to be in places where I'm tolerated and not celebrated? and not celebrated. That is something I needed to hear early in life. Yeah. Early in life. 
that is that statement sums up a lot for me. We all need to let I think throughout times in our lives, like I've 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 needed it. I, so, like you said, I think it's something that's going to come and go at different periods in our life. I remember. So, one thing I did when I came back to New York. So, I was in Macedonia. I was contracting for the army. So, the same grandmother that's here causing trouble. My grandfather had a stroke. So, I remember I called her, and she was just like, "I need you here. You're my oldest grandchild." So, I left. I came back to meet Rochester, and all my family was like, you're here. And I want to say that they tricked me, because he lived the mother 13 years. Ain't nothing was wrong with Maddie. He lived another 13 years. So I was like, y'all tricked me. You got me back here. And, and, and I don't regret it, because again, that my grandfather, Red White, was the man. So I don't regret that. But I started working for the state. I was a special ed teacher. And again, that was something to where there weren't too many of us in that position. And I loved working with my with my class. I love my staff. But I left. They deployed me. The military called me up to go overseas. You know how when you're out of something, you can't go back. And I was constantly fighting with either staff or higher ups. And I remember I came back and I was just like, Grandma, I don't know why I was talking with her when I, and it was getting really bad. Like I was getting into it with a lot of the staff, you know, to where I would play gospel me before I would even go into work. I would have to play gospel. And I was telling Grandma, Grandma, I don't want to go there anymore. But it was a good state job with good benefits. And I had been there for like seven years. And she was like, so why are you going? And I was like, because it's a good job. You know, I make good money. She was like, but you don't have to think about it, but you, fuck them, excuse me, F them, sorry, F them. She was like, and she was like, you're going to always work. You know who you are. Don't go there. If you, if it's, if she's like, you don't even got no kids, dummy. And she was, I was like, that's when I started my whole serial entrepreneur. She's like, you don't even have any kids. You're going to always work. I like you. I'll feed you. She was like, She's right. Why am I sick? I'm dreading going to a place to where I'm tolerated and not celebrated. And it, you're tolerated and not celebrated, but you said it right because you're taking yourself there. The perspective she gave you on it is the reason you're going there is you. So why are you going there? She's she was the one that started me on this serial entrepreneurship. It's just, and I'm so thankful because, and again, I still have the military as a corner. So I could do all my different businesses and then be like, ooh, I need some money. So can you put me in orders for three months? Let me put me in orders for three months. I will go to the base, work, not that hard. I'll go to the gym for two hours. We would have Bible study. Let's go to lunch for two. I was just at certain times. It was there was no sweat coming off of my brow. And I'm getting paid really good money. So and I'm with a group of people that yeah, we all we all have something bigger than us that we're working towards. You said you were working a job, there was no sweat coming off your brow, and you were getting paid really good money. You also said that your first job was at McDonald's, where I'm sure you were making that nice minimum wage, three something, four something an hour. Okay, so that's where you are. That's the 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 the, the spectrum going yes. from nice job. Where you get paid a lot of money to a job where you really have to work every moment of every day and you're paid minimum. McDonald's was my first job as a 15 year old. That was my first job. Right. No, I'm just, I'm going from the, the oh, okay. of those two of how in this country it seems like the higher up you get, the more you get paid for doing less yes but the lower you are on the totem pole the more they ride you to do more for less yes 
Yes. So that 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 is that's 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 how our country was built, right? From the free labor to laws designed to have the working class stay the working class. You know, our retirement system, our social security will give you just enough, right? We'll give you just enough. And so there were so many lessons and so many aha moments. The biggest one for me was my mother worked at Genesee Brewery, and that was a good job. And she was among a group of women that were the first women hired to work at this brewery. They had to cross a picket line because men were upset that these women were taking these good jobs from men. Because my mother didn't need to eat or feed those kids. Right? <laughs> so she was, a, it just, this was in 19, I think 1978. So she said it was ugly, you know. Men didn't want them there that brewery. And she's like, she had to work. My mother worked that job for 29 years. And she said she did that for us. And she did. She did that for us. And it was a brewery. It was cold. There were rodents. The sexism, the racism, she did it. And she was able to retire at 54. And so I remember she said to y'all make sure y'all do it better than me. That part. I I see that there's a different time now. Um, uh, um, different time, I mean, just it's just a different mindset. Um, I don't know. It's probably because I'm in it. And I'm in it being someone who is seeing you to look back and say, y'all didn't do anything. I see where they did something. I see what I'm doing. But I don't see your contribution, your age group, your age. Or what did you do? Do we kept y'all safe? I transitioned through people at Rodney King being beaten by the police on camera. And they acting like ain't nothing happened. What's wrong? What's the problem? It was the on camera. Yes, these beatings take took place before. Yes, prior to that, there were a lot of black people hung from trees. Billy Holiday sung a yes. song about that. Yes. A lot of us hung from trees. So I'm not saying that trauma didn't happen. It was just totally different to actually sit and have the news come on, which is something that as a youth, you're told you have to watch as an assignment for one of your classes. Right. Be like, watch the news and write on the article or read the paper and write on the article. And which is also traumatic. That's the yeah. right and that's and it, it, it's in a loop yeah yeah it's in a loop. yeah the trauma the trauma and the drama is on a loop i have, I have not i don't i haven't seen i don't know i think the last thing i saw kind of saw was trayvon and that still is the one that just i've not seen george Floyd. I, I i knew not to watch that I know to leave the room, right? Because my grandmother and my mother news, news. I know I don't need to see that. I know I don't need to see. I don't need to see the murders. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Yes. And that's exactly how I feel. And I'm not discounting or discrediting them. I have a tender heart. Um, so there are things that I do shield my eyes from. Um you yes. like you said you have to be aware you have to know you so i know me and there are even you know there are jobs that i've had where i've literally had to sit through and shield myself from the things that i knew would i just don't want to roll over in the middle of the night and think about that yes it replay because my heart is so big and you know that about yourself. And yes, you know that you can't afford to sink, right? You can't afford the you can't you can't afford the luxury of even trying to sit with that. You can't because you're gonna wallow, 
right? You're going to wallow in it. Yeah. And again, it goes back to, I know you said my mother, but I remember my brother was going through a lot of stuff. And I remember she said to him, you want to stay in that hole? I'm going to always reach down, but I'm not going to sit there with you. I'm not, I can't sit in there with you. She, uh, the things that she would say to him, like, I'm not going to sit in there with you. The same thing I've said to family members that I've been there, maybe because I've been in the neighborhood. And after a while, when I realized you're going to do this, I love you. I'm going to pray. I told my one cousin, and he always said, when you said that, it, it clicked for him. I said, I got, this, I got the dress ready for the funeral, but I'm not going to watch you kill yourself. And, and he and I, we're a month apart. Everybody, that, if, you, if you know me, you know him. If you know him, you know me. We're a month apart. We, we ride hard. We are a month apart. I'm the oldest than him. He was making a lot of, he's lived with me. Like he's gotten out of prison. He's gotten out of Attica and come to when I was active duty. So he was my best friend. But he made a different choice. Yeah. And I can't I can't keep running after you. I can't keep running the buildings where you're being held hostage. I can't watch you kill yourself. I, I won't watch you kill yourself. But I'm telling you, the last time and he is He's good. He bought a house. He's engaged. He's clean. You know, he's not that person anymore. He's this person. But I, once I, I came to terms, it's part of that grief, I think, too, with me working and volunteering with hospice. There is a grief process even when they're still alive. And I had gone through it. And I had prayed. And I was, I would think of him a smile of all the good times, all the fun times. You know, the roller skating rink. No. <laughs> the dance competitions, you know, the swimming pools, the movies, Crush Groove. <laughs> and we performed it. Like <laughs> so I'm thinking about this stuff that we're laughing. I'm thinking about that. You know, and he's good now, and we're tight now, and he's here, he's fully present. When he, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. You are aware. You're aware of yourself. You're aware of those around you. Uh, it is awesome to see the light shine in you, through you, and all around you. You are absolutely yeah. beautiful, ma'am. Thank you so Likewise. much. I didn't get a chance in the episode to ask you this. So I'm going to ask you now, can you share with the confident you family some confident tips, some confident tips on just being? Some tips. I've had so many mentors. It's been... I probably forgot about some of them, but some tips that I would have for the confident youth family would be enjoy, enjoy life. Give people, give yourself some grace and mercy. Know that a lot of times when someone's coming at you or towards you in a negative way, it's really not even about you. So if you can, you know, Scrunch your toes and give them that grace and mercy. Give yourself that grace and mercy. Um, be approachable. Have a smile on your face. Um, count your blessings daily. When you're really down and you're overwhelmed, get up and go for a walk. Play some music. Go to the library. Go do something good for someone else. Um, because we're really all in this and we're really all here together trying to figure it out, trying to have good feelings, trying to love on ours, on ours that we love, and to laugh um, and to experience everything that you can. And don't watch that news too much. <laughs> That's what I would have for the confident you family. Um, and love yourself. Love yourself. Like, love yourself first. Like, 
people talk about a why, right? My why is my family. My why is that. And this may be contrary, you know. And I don't have kids, right? But I think your first why has to be you. You have to be your first why. It's kind of simple. For me, again, I don't have kids, but I'm my why. So that I can do what I need to do for my other whys. You can have more than one why, but your first why has to be you. So confident you. Stay being confident, stay learning, stay smiling, stay watching Marion because it's only going to help you be more confident. That's all I have. <laughs> you have much more than enough, ma'am. Oh my goodness. Exceeding abundantly above all. Yes, you do. My goodness. You said a whole mouthful. I'm like, ma'am, you going to start me to talking again, though. <laughs> Some about that love you you gotta come first Listen, as a young mother getting on the plane i had just had my daughter just turned 20 and had my daughter two months later so i was 19 pregnant and i'm going and so my daughter had to be maybe two months and i take going to take her to back to new york to new york to see her dad's mom for her to meet her dad's side. It's for them to meet our child. Uh -huh. And I get on the plane and that stewardess stands there on a full plane that is going from Washington, D.C., Reagan National to LaGuardia in New York. And she looks at that at me, that little black girl sitting there holding that little black baby. And she gives the whole speech on how to save yourself. If that mask drop down, you put it on your face. Because if you don't save yourself first, you won't have the energy, the air, the strength, the power, the mindset, the will to then hold the mask and save the baby. So make sure there is a plane full of people and she is only talking to me. That mask come down and you, I need you to cover your face first. See? And you're going to want to take care of your baby. But how are you going to do that and you're falling out because you didn't get any oxygen? So now you and the baby. You gotta work on you. Make sure you're good and then work on the best. Right. And that's the 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 so that whenever someone says save yourself first, I think that is thing that is another thing that black yes. people say is oh you're selfish. Oh, you're selfish. You're not selfish. Oh. It's the same thing about money. You want yes. money? Oh, you, oh, you that type of person. Oh, you greedy. Oh, you this. Oh, you no. How am I gonna help if I don't have the funds to help? It, as Steve Harvey said, the best way I can help a poor person is not be one of them. Uh, say it again. The best way I can help a poor person is not be one of them. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> ain't never lie. Okay, so I'm going to need that book from the family. The family got some work to do. <laughs> Maybe now, I will. <laughs> old boy's name. I don't know if that's old boy's name or that's the family name. What's the family name? I'm looking for a book. We are, so my dad, I'm a Jackson, and my mother, I'm a Wright and a McCullough, so. That, that Jackson Wright McCullough joint got to come out. <laughs> I'm going to tell her that you better get to work. I'm going to tell her you're going to plant so many gardens. That would be an amazing book to have a book of, of black sayings. Yes, sir. We do it at our family reunion. Like, we literally, like, we, I know the last day, like, we, each table would stand up and have, have two things. Like, we did it as a group. We wrote down things. And we would, we would write that. And, like, you know, we had a whole board full of them, you know. And it was. I have the book written already. I just need yeah. a book to be put in a book. I got, listen, I'm going to tell my mother. And let that be the cover of the book. But inside the book, you actually find the sayings and the little stories 
that go with each saying. Girl, don't talk to me. I'm just Bobby talking. and Andrea, they will be all over this. Thank you. <laughs> they can set up the week. That scholarship firm going to be pumping. <laughs> you already wrote them. You mm -hmm. already wrote them and you put it in a trust so that that money just keeps going to the family. What I yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I talked to him about this trust because I'm like, we got all this land, but what we doing with it? The snakes are having a ball. Why don't we set up some cell phone towers? Because we got a lot of dirt. I'm like, I'm like, so what are we doing with it? We just want, yeah, they not I want, y'all keep talking about, I literally have dirt. I have acres in my name, but y'all won't let me do nothing with it. I don't have no kids. I want to enjoy it now. I want to take a two week cruise. This the start. It's gonna be a cell phone tower right there. That's the whole thing. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and do that now. <laughs> go ahead and do that. I'm telling you that book, I'm gonna need that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell my mother. I'm gonna call her and be like, hello, mother. I'm gonna tell mommy. That, I love that. See? Look at you. Yeah. Confident. <laughs> Coach. There's a whole up scene. So we gotta do, have you doing the intros, a confident. A confident coach, and then the podcast. Yeah, I, yeah. You should just. Yeah, this is good. My goodness, it is. It feels beautiful to be seen and to be have your voice be appreciated. Thank you so much. But not only it's not even you being seen; you're helping others to be seen. Like that is like you are not being selfish with your gift. So thank you. And for me, another thing that has been a, a, a blessing is my relationships with women. Like I feel bad for women to say, I don't have women for us. I feel so. Right. That's what you need. <laughs> right. That is so lonely to me. That is so, that is a ready power, right? That's like a, just that power in friendship with women. Yes. Like when we get together, it's like like the women women used to do. Yeah. It's just it's something to see. I can honestly say there were periods of my life, chunks of my life, not even periods, chunks where there weren't any, but I could say that there were not any around that I would want to be. Yes. Anyway, but now that I have placed myself and invested in myself and put myself in rooms where there are women women worthy of holding conversations and learning from such as Miss Jackson, if you're next. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's herself to, to be able to hold this beautiful conversation. You know, that is something that a woman, you, you have to invest in yourself. It's like, after a while, you have to stop saying, pointing the finger outward and go, okay, so what am I doing? Yes. What am, where am I? What? Yes. So what am I? Am I always talking negative? Is that why people don't really want to sit down? And having those women that are not only your cheerleaders, but they're going to check you. I've had my girls be like, mm-mm. And I'll be like, what? Like, the, I've had interventions done on me. And if you have the right caliber of people around you, you can trust that it's for your betterment. I, I, that is my, I, I, I just, like I said, I can't, you know, some, it's, some people want to like try I think be petty because they're not happy about oh you don't have any kids what was you I can't go there with you but I'm, I, I can't go there and be sorry about that with you when I have so many people that love me that don't even have to they don't even share my DNA yeah. that have been there for me my, I have one best friend since I was 15 and she is where the other one is from 96 so I was with them both this last weekend. Two Leos. Woo! God is good. Both of it. Both of the Leos. Yeah. Woo! And their minds. And they are amazing. And 
they can even do together. And they actually, it's just powerful, you know? And it's love and it's support and it's encouragement because we need that. We all need that. And again, what you do, that confidence piece. And I love that your podcast is not just confident in business, right? You did it all. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Because I believe there are all sides. People have all sides. So I want to hear all sides of you. I want to hear about, you know, everything. The highs, the lows, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. Because beauty comes from ugly. Things get broken before they're made yes. beautiful. Yeah. It's it's, and you're so good at it. Listen, for a child to get here, that childbirth is some painful, gut-wrenching, oh, Lord. Thank you for your service. Sweet child. And then you have the most beautiful, delicate, gentle, how did you produce create that is i've been in two and i was not supposed to be and i'm still resentful but (laughs) yes two birds (laughs) but that's that's evidence that there is a god that there's something bigger than us and that we have something to rise up to which i'm sure when you had your beautiful blessings like look at them like you you, like I said, your daughter definitely is you, right? And then two, you and your father can introduce them with your head held high. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's powerful. And then you also, again, with the interview with your son, you also let them be who they are and you know your kids. You know, again, I'm not a parent, you know, and I would tell people, well, you're not a parent. Yeah, but I have a couple. I'm thankful that my mother knew her kids individually, just yes. like you know yours. Yes. You know yours. <laughs> you saw him early on, you know. So I would, I, I would, again, I'm not a parent, but, you know, when you always watch it, I would tell parents, let your kids be who they are. Don't yeah. live through them. Yeah. Because that's their life. Yeah. And you don't want to cripple them mm-hmm. with the stuff that you wish that you did. Like, share that, right? But let them live their lives and let them be them and know that you poured so much into them that they're going to be okay. Yeah. Priceless. Yes. Just know that you've poured so much into them that they're going to be okay. The thing that helps me be a parent and watch them do things or make choices and go, okay, is because I never forget myself going through that process. It's a process, right? It's a process. They gotta go through it. They can't go around it. Right? They can't avoid it. Nope. And <laughs> keep saving them from it then they're just going to be dependent on you the rest of their life. You're going to cripple them. And in this world, we can't afford that. No. No. There are times, and and, and not, there are times that I take care of them. There are things that it's like, yeah, nah, you just need to be cared for right now. That's, that's just how it is right now. That's just what's going to go down. But as soon as they back up on their feet, it's like, alright, baby, I gotta go. Bye-bye. See you later. I'm like, I just came to make sure this part right here, yes, Cindy didn't come after my kid. Oh, that, that you had, you know, the yes. things that you needed to survive. Okay, you good? You back on your feet? You standing? You can? I'm out. See you later. And look, you actually lean into your faith. Yeah, that's a soup. That is something that I, 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 I think. COVID, that was one of the pluses that, you know, and I would tell my airmen too, I don't care if 
your God, that's your choice, or whatever you want to call him or her, if it's that pebble that you carry in your hand, but it has to be something bigger than you that you can lean into and that you can count on. That's a source. Yeah. You know. And that faith, right? That faith is okay. irreplaceable, unrefutable, unwavering. If you're smart, don't don't. But if you waver, you better set up how you get back. You would have already set up your plan to get back. Oh, whenever I feel like this, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I walk by faith and not by sight. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ that's meant for me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. All right, I'm good. Woo! All right, wait a minute. They tried to get me. They tried to, they tried to get me. <laughs> up and be ready for that fight with that word and the crazy thing is the battle isn't even external it's right here it'll just be warring it's just up in there just MMA you know it's just up there wrestling it's just boxing it's just you know AI. it's just automatic weapons yeah I was at church and the gentleman who got up to read the prayer literally said, I looked at us, came across a statistic that we think 50,000 to 80,000 negative, no, thoughts a day. 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Yes. And 80% yes. at minimum are negative. Are negative. Yes. So that awareness that you're talking about is something you definitely need to have. I started, you said journaling. I started to journal just the things I said to myself and realized there mm. were things that I was saying to myself all day, every day that was feeding me negatively. The fruit I was getting from it was negative. Because it started, I would say this, and then it just started how everything else went. I would say this, and it started everything. And I think this deals with your mental health. You want to have healthy mental, you need to know what you're thinking and saying to yourself. That is, you know, that is that's the best powerful. You can let anybody else talk to you that way, but you're talking to yourself that way. That right there. So what I kept saying to myself, I would literally get up and go, roll over, I'm tired. Get up, go get in, I'm tired. Oh my goodness, I'm tired. I like lost count how many times it had become natural for me just to say it. I wasn't tired. I wasn't even tired. But because it was something I always said to myself without paying attention yes. I literally that was the first thing that would talk me out of doing any of the ideas I had oh I could do that later so that lazy thing that you were talking about before yes. that would be my that's the trigger that would turn or that's the saying I would say in my head that would then spiral and keep me on this lazy hamster wheel yes the procrastination became my boo and I didn't even know I was in an abusive relationship with this dude but he kept showing up and you, you kept letting me in so I had to yeah. I had to throw this podcast for me and being able to end the episode and go oh my god episode 25 done that thing is coming from the depths of my soul because I did not allow procrastination. And I did not allow myself to keep saying, I'm tired. I'm tired. That thing right there can kill, steal, and destroy. That one phrase, kill, steal, and destroy. I can tell you the things I was supposed to do. But because I started out with saying, I'm tired. Okay, well, let me just get a, 
let me get a few minutes. No, it wasn't a rest. Let me rest my mind by turning on the TV and watching mm. for a little bit. Mm. Turning the two, two turning the three. Well, yeah, it's late now. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna make sure tomorrow I knock that out because I told myself. So therefore, my body followed suit. My emotions followed suit. Yeah, they all lined up. And when I realized that that was a statement for me, so I would always I, I advise people really. Listen to what you're telling yourself every day. I want you to come back and tell me what are those statements that you're saying. And when you think about it, it's like, no, I'm not. I'm not tired all week. I realize all day, every day I say I'm tired. When I realized that, I was like, yeah. I've been tired. Yeah. Just, why am I waking up saying I'm tired? Putting it out there. The case. Guess what you need to do, boo? Because I found out. Wait, you are little. You're not sleeping as well as you could. Probably because you left that TV running all night. Last <laughs> night. So you can't go into that deep deep. And if you can't turn this TV off without your mind really, then you need to deal with whatever that is your mind is really about. Yeah. And then you may want to put on some scriptures really soft in the background so you can just be with God as you rest. Yes. Talk to him. Have a conversation with him. I had to have an awareness to, to get my mind to the place where Confident You podcast could honestly have the coach to your confident voice sitting here doing what she does. But then I have to be attentive. Now that I'm aware, I still have to be attentive to the fact that that I could do that again. Yeah. Make sure it doesn't happen again. To make sure I don't sabotage myself again. It's important. It's the training, right? It's the rethinking. Yes. And once you know it, hmm. you can't go back. Hmm. You shouldn't go back. Yeah, that's true. You shouldn't go back. You shouldn't go back. I have, I've always told, or I've, I've said, I'm intentionally ignorant. I ignorance is bliss for me sometimes. There are things that, and I say that it's like you said because I'm an empathetic person. I don't need to know everything. I need to know what works for me and the ones that matter to me. But all that other stuff. I, that, it just there's there's no value in that. Not for me. Yeah, not for me because I know me. Yeah. Like attorneys, they really love the law and the cases and the facts about it and all of. They love those real people life things. I can watch the show all day, but the real people life thing tugs on my heart, so I have to yes. forget that. Yes. Yes. So I don't take on everybody else's stuff and, and feel weighed down and heavy and I can't do my assignment. Exactly. Cautious, cautious of how the enemy can still kill. The enemy is slick. And now the enemy I'm talking about is not just the external enemy. It's the enemy and the inner me. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's and true. then when you that whole lazy thing, I was like, oh, is she going to say procrastination? What's she about to say? Well, just, it's just the lazy. I, I, I don't, you know, I I myself will always be a work in progress. Ah. So it's, I, I never want to come from judgment. Yeah. It's just that I'm speaking about this because when I actually am a real life mental health counselor, I didn't just go on the internet and get a certificate, right? I've actually practiced. I've actually worked with people. I've actually, you know, seen the trauma. I've been a part of it, you know? And so I say these things not to just be judgmental or know it all. Right. Because, you know, we definitely, we get about those, I need some receipts, you know? <laughs> so, 
It's a new day, and I'm gonna need them receipts. <laughs> well, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. If I'm okay with it, you know. Especially, it's funny like even doing real estate, you know, and the home ownership has been fought with, you know, racism and discrimination, and our people not getting a little bit of the pie. Um, so when people come to me, they have a lot of distrust, and I usually like. We, I, I know our people. I've met our people. I am our people. But eventually now, I am not going to have, we're going to have to figure this out. You go to a therapy, you're going to find another 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 agent. You can't even look for a house. I have no reason to lie to you. I have no reason to lie to you. I have zero reason to lie to you. I want you to own. Right. I'm telling you, for $100,000, you're not getting a four bedroom, three bath, moving ready home with a pool. Now, if you find one, and it, you send it to me, and I open the door, but I'm not just going to keep doing this with you. Mm. No, I'm not. I'm just not. I don't have it to do. I don't have it to do. So yeah, wow. that's a lot to ask for for a little bit of a uh, investment. Okay, so but this is a primary home. Some of them looking for. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started. I heard you can do some foreclosures. Even if it is, you don't have any cash money. Right. So what are we doing here? Right. I want to do one of the foreclosure deals. You don't have no money. You don't have the money. You don't have the skills. So if that does become available, plus, don't you think that's kind of ghoulish? You want to wait for somebody else to lose their property? <laughs> hey, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's coming. I guess they figure I'm gonna get it one way or another. So I'm gonna do the another. I'm not gonna do the one way. Don't I, listen. All my homes have been fixer uppers, and for me, there's there's the value, right? And then you can pay. You can have that house with the gray paint and the shiny, you know, light fixture and all that. You're gonna pay for it. You will pay for it. Right. And it's a choice, and I don't knock it for anybody. Right. You know, I just, I'm always, I, I am a very good feelings and not facts. Right. Buying a home is emotional. So I get that. But let's both stay, let's all stay centered if we do feelings and not facts. Right. And that's what, let's do, let's have these discussions together. And, and, I, and I love it. And I love helping our people. I've helped so many people that are first time homeowners in their families and that just makes me cry and i'm happy and i don't care what your budget is because i'm going to eat regardless right right that's it's all been, right i'm already yeah. she got you i can't wait to visit because tell her i'm hungry <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you again for staying in the after party. It's the after party. Listen, where we, hey, don't do me like that. <laughs> like that. You know, it's 50 year hip hop this year. Like, this is this our 50 year hip hop. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, my goodness, it sure is. And it all began with Grandmaster Flash. And the fuel is five. And figuring out how to stop and connect those beats which from one record to the next. He literally would take the record, slow it down, and mark it with a crayon so he'd know where that beat yes. would catch up with the other beat and where he could loop things around and yes. go back and forth. And telling our stories. Telling, telling our, our stories. And then the Eight million stories, stories in the Naked City. Telling our stories, which was a source of comfort and empowerment and pride. Yes. Telling our stories. You knew it, what, we weren't alone. You said to get out of your neighborhood, to get out of your hood, to get out of your surroundings. That right there, just crossing boroughs, helped people to go, wait, they over there doing that? They over there doing that? And then to have the East Coast, West Coast. Wait, they over there doing that? Wait, they over there doing it just it just brought it made it much broader um for people who weren't in the military. 
Yes. Up and go and do and see. I want to thank you for getting up tonight and coming and speaking and sharing. You gave great wisdom and great value in just being an amazing person. Thank you, Mary. Color, not necessary. Just an amazing person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Great investment in um, the platform and all of those that will be able to glean from it for what? This is the World Wide Web. <laughs> The, yes, ma'am, from around the world, you know, so thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, staying in the after party. I always feel like that after conversation, if you have no idea, it's like, nah, I don't know. We go in, we still go in. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. Thank We're you, out Mary. In the next episode of Confident You, thank you again, Ms. Justin. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you.